What's the number one sign of a bad home security system? A home security system that's so complicated you never use it. This is exactly the type of security system Simply Safe has spent a decade fighting against. They believe that simple is safer, and it's exactly why Simply Safe is the home security for right now, when feeling safe at home has never been more important. I know a couple of friends and also a person from the Something Scary team who have enjoyed Simply Safe over the past year. That's why I'm excited to get my own. They love it, say it's super easy to install, and I'm really looking forward to having more peace of mind with Simply Safe. What's important to me is that it doesn't require a technician to come over. Um, my home is protected around the clock, and I won't have to worry about any outrageous monthly fees. Head to simplysafe.com slash scary and get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee. That's simplysafe.com slash scary to make sure they know that our show sent you. Hey. Before we start our video today, I just wanted to take a moment and thank all of you for helping us get to 2 million subs. We just hit 2 million as we were preparing for this episode. It's the first time we've ever done a two-part story and we are so excited that it coincided with that. And most of all, so grateful to all of you out there in our Something Scary community for being with us every week and for watching and subscribing and commenting. We have more great things coming for you. So please, please keep sharing the Something Scary love with all your friends. Thank you so much, my dark darlings. Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Critter Valley Black. The writer of the following story wanted you to know that it was adapted from a Reddit post by a user named Black Cartridge Believer 98. That after being interviewed over email, the post was then deleted, and so was any sign of the user. I ripped open the thick brown envelope and out slipped a used black game cartridge with a sticky note attached. Don't play. Killed system. Sorry. My friends wouldn't stop telling me about their new Critter Valley pre-orders arriving soon. The only console I had was decades old, so I usually would just wait to watch them play. Until now. After running my finger along the jagged burnt surface of the cartridge, my eyes fixed on the bootleg label with its garishly printed Japanese characters and a strange red symbol. It felt like there was purpose in that. Strength. Wait until my friends find out I'm playing an English hack of the original Critter Valley, never released outside of Japan, weeks before their pre-orders would arrive. And, best part, it would run on my retro system. I looked again at the warning on the note. So what if I brick my old console? It's about ready for the trash anyway. I paid two weeks worth of allowance for the game, and now I was going to play. Flinging off the covers, I went to my desk and pulled out my system. I took a seat, popped in the cartridge, and turned it on. When the game started, there was no boot-up screen. Weird, I thought, when I found no home menu, not even an option to choose a saved game to start from. In the back of my mind, I felt that there was something off. There was like a ringing in my ear. Somewhere a thin, whistling wind started up. Was it coming from the game's CPU? Had I wasted my money? The game booted me directly into the center of a digital village at night. In the middle of a main square stood the villager under my control. Whosoever owned this game, their avatar looked pretty normal and wore sunglasses. On this main drag, I couldn't help but notice the shops that were supposed to be there were gone. As far as I knew, you couldn't really modify things like that, but this player had. Not even the villagers were out. Strange way to play, I thought, searching for the logic. As I peered closer, my screen flickered, and I saw a partially blurred image of a shadowy character with red eyes. It engaged a dialogue scene, but instead of addressing my villager, it turned instead towards me. Have you returned, Isaac? read the broken speech bubble. 
through a garble of static noise. I shook my console remote and the weird malfunction went away. Who's Isaac? I wondered as I felt the system getting warm to the touch. Wandering south to the main square, I found the other villagers' houses lined up. Each one was identical in shape and uniformly black. Whoever's game this was sure had strange taste. Maybe it was this Isaac? They really liked a bizarre aesthetic. In the windows of each house were Halloween lights, orange and bright. And they went through the effort of custom designing the front of each door to display a signpost with the red circular symbol from the label. Most people design movie posters of pictures of their dogs, but this had that symbol. Strength. The words echoed in my mind. To my surprise, it popped up on the screen, and I could hear the words repeated from a chorus of critters I couldn't see. Was I imagining things? Shuddering, I walked beyond the grim houses to look for a break in the cliffs at either side. A static digital moon shone over my character as they walked. Eventually, I arrived at a dead-end clearing. Tired and drowsy, I rubbed my eyes and looked at my phone. It was 3 a.m. What happened to the time? Then, through my TV speakers came a digitalized whistle of wind. The screen went black and flickered back on. That's when I saw my villager standing at the top of a hill, looking down at a large symbol glowing red and pulsating before the edge of a cliff. Suddenly, my villager equipped their shovel and began moving around without my input. I looked on in horror as my character's sunglasses disappeared without warning, revealing dark holes where the character's eyes should have been. Of its own accord, my villager started walking towards the outer edge of the symbol. That's when I noticed that equilaterally placed along the outer ridge of the symbol were 10 plots of dirt, and a terrible certainty grew within me that something, somehow, was buried in each one. From every tiny plot, speech bubbles sprang up like notifications, each one reading, Isaac, Isaac. The air in the room grew dense with a pressure that popped one of my ears. Isaac, Isaac. A loud digital whistling of wind sounded off everywhere around me. Isaac, Isaac. In those last seconds, I realized the villager was going to take the shovel and dig up one of those plots. Isaac, dig up the plot and break the circle. Isaac, break the enclosure. Isaac. I was terrified and smelled something acrid. The game console had begun to overheat. This was a trap for something, and this digital avatar free of my control was going to let it out. The character began to frantically dig, unearthing an animal skull. With a whir, the TV screen flickered images of the character I saw earlier and the word strength flashed before my eyes as critters began the chant again. The creature drew near, strength, the chanting growing louder, strength. I was glued to the screen. I couldn't look away. It was coming for me. The controller sparked, sending shocks through my hands, up my arms. There was a sudden pop, and the house went dark. A fuse had tripped somewhere, freeing me from my shocked immobility. In the blackout, I twitched. The imagery still seared on my retinas. The lights flicked back on again. Quickly, I lurched over and unplugged the TV. My muscles still spasming, I tossed the controller away from me, vowing to never play again, hoping that the power had gone off before anything had escaped into my world. Have you seen our new stickers? Our official Something Scary collection is growing. Two new monsters have been unleashed. They're now available for purchase on our Teespring link below. Don't forget to collect them all and tag us at We Are Snarled in pics of places they can be found. Want more Something Scary? You can hear more stories over on the Something Scary podcast, available for free on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. The links are in the description below. Thank you to all of our patrons. While we do run a limited amount of ads, this show would not be possible without your support. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings, sweet dreams.